September 5th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Timothy, Chapter 3, from the New Testament. This saying is trustworthy. If someone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a good work. The overseer then must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and able teacher, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not contentious, free from the love of money. He must manage his own household well and keep his children in control without losing his dignity. But if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for the church of God? He must not be a recent convert or he may become arrogant and fall into the punishment that the devil will exact. And he must be well thought of by those outside the faith so that he may not fall into disgrace and be caught by the devil's trap. Deacons likewise must be dignified, not two-faced, not given to excessive drinking, not greedy for gain, holding to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. And these also must be tested first and then let them serve as deacons if they are found blameless. Likewise, also their wives must be dignified, not slanderous, temperate, faithful in every respect. Deacons must be husbands of one wife and good managers of their children and their own households. For those who have served well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and great boldness in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. I hope to come to you soon, but I am writing these instructions to you in case I am delayed, to let you know how people ought to conduct themselves in the household of God, because it is the church of the living God, the support and bulwark of the truth, and we all agree our religion contains amazing revelation. He was revealed in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among Gentiles, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. God, this uh, particular passage, and there's a similar one in Titus, talks about how our pastors and elders and other teachers in our churches should conduct themselves as well as uh, some of the traits and this is not an exhaustive list but some of the traits that that they are expected to have if they're going to be uh, overseers of other people's teachings now the only one who actually has teaching in the list is the overseer or the pastor uh, of a church um, sometimes referred to as elders uh, it depends upon which version of the Bible you're reading, but they should be able to teach. Uh, deacons don't have that in their list, but I, and I know that, that books and books and books have been written about that first part, but it's the second part that attracts my attention when Paul is saying, I hope to come to you soon, but I'm writing these instructions just in case I get delayed to let you know how people ought to conduct themselves in the household of God. Because it is a church of the living God, the support and bulwark of the truth. Bulwark meaning a wall of protection. So these guidelines actually are for the whole living body of Christ. They're good reminders of things that we should be striving for, things that we should be looking to do um, and to have in us, especially that we would have the respect of those outside of the church community so that we will have a voice in their lives, so that we will be able to talk to them. Uh, sometimes I see, and I have no doubt I've done it myself, sometimes we see Christians who come across as, as high and mighty and so the a non-saved person, which I used to be, uh, would feel uncomfortable reaching out. And so we have to make sure that we have that relationship with the non-believers as well. We truly are the, the protectors of that truth within the church. And if we let our personal life slip, if if we're impatient with our children, if our, our wives are off doing things that are inappropriate and reflecting on our marriage, if we become arrogant, these are all things that can be destructive ultimately for your kingdom, God, that as people watch our lives not be down this path that you've set before us, it can easily create that devil's trap that that he's talking about, that Paul's talking about in this letter, uh, where people can become disrespectful of you, 
not you, God, uh, meaning me, can be, become disrespectful of me, uh, start accusing me of saying one thing and doing something else. And so this above reproach, this constant working towards that perfection of Jesus, which we'll never, we'll never attain in this, in this world, but it's something that we need to constantly strive for. So even though uh, this, these verses and the verses in Titus are kind of held apart a for pastors and elders and overseers and deacons and whatever the different titles are people use in church, it, they're just a great reminder, as Paul says, that we are all part of the body of Christ. We are all part of this church of the living God, uh, of your church, God, and we're responsible for that strength, that truth, that protection um, of that church. And if we let our lives slip, then that protection of the truth uh, will slip as well. God, strengthen us today. Bring in your armor in full force and strengthen us as we go out throughout the day against the attacks of the devil, against our, our choices over your will, and also uh, allow those relationships to grow deeper with people outside of the faith so that we do have opportunities to speak to them about you and help us be mindful of our life especially when people aren't watching that it is still god focused completely on you in your son's name i pray amen